In today's video, I'm going to be doing an unboxing and review of a new pair of binoculars. These are the Celestron 10 by 30 by 50 zoom binoculars. They are the up close model. Uh, and we will see how they are. A couple of things to mention about them before we even start. First of all, this is not uh, a premium brand of binocular. Good binoculars generally cost between two and three hundred. Uh, you can spend twelve hundred on a pair of binoculars. Uh, astronomical binoculars tend to be a little bit more expensive. Terrestrial ones a little less so. These are terrestrial. Uh, Celestron are made in China. They are a less expensive brand, although I would say they're comparable to uh, some medium quality brands without too much of a stretch. I will say that of the uh, lower cost binoculars and telescopes, Celestron have the reputation of being one of the better brands of that low cost variation. Uh, these were particularly inexpensive. These were on sale and I got them through Amazon and they cost me less than 50. So that's really a, a very, very good price. And I bought them primarily for bird watching. Uh, my wife and I, for example, have recently renewed our membership at uh, the Wetlands and Wildlife uh, Trust at, at Slimbridge in Gloucestershire, here in the UK. Uh, and there's really some very good bird watching uh, opportunities there. And we're looking to uh, use some optics. I have been other binoculars, standard eight times magnification, which is the recommended kind of magnification for most bird watching. But I did want to get something a bit more powerful. I was a little undecided about just how much magnification I really want to have. And in the end, I decided these zoom ones would give me an opportunity to try a variety of different magnifications to see what's actually going to be best. Because long term, I may at some point buy another pair, which are uh, better quality, but a specific magnification. For those who don't know, 10 by 30 by 50 means it'll go from 10 times magnification up to 30 times magnification. And the objective lens, the one in the front, that's 50 millimeters, or about two inches uh, in diameter. Now, uh, a decent sized lens like that will allow a lot of light in. Uh, these have B BAK7 prisms rather than the BAK4 prisms. The fours are, are superior in quality, but they're also a little bit more expensive. Uh, these slightly less good optically, but not by a lot. Uh, they will let a little bit less light in. If they were intended for astronomical use, ideally you'd want the BAK-4s, which I'm hoping isn't going to be much of an issue. What I will say is, is that at 10 times magnification, the picture, I mean, certainly in normal daylight, these will work fine. 10 times magnification, 10 by 50s are, are great. So they should actually provide really good optical performance. As you use the lever to increase magnification from 10 times up to 15, 20, 25, 30 times magnification. The amount of light getting in is going to be less, so in darker conditions that's less useful, but for greater distance it's very useful because frankly uh, if you're talking about significant difference distances, uh, something like 8 times, 10 times magnification is a bit limiting. So this is why I thought I would get the zoom ones and see how well they work. But to begin with, we'll have the unboxing. And then in part two of this video, we'll have an actual field test because this weekend we're going to Slimbridge. So we'll actually be able to use them in the field and show you a little bit about how well they are actually performing. So take two. So we'll start with the unboxing. And just for once, it does look rather a lot like Amazon have decided not to get carried away with the packaging. Uh, so what we have are the up close G2 10 by 30 by 50 zoom binoculars by Celestron. Mm -hmm. 
and it's a bit dark in here, but basically. Okay, so what we have is size 10 to 30 by 50, prism type Poro BK7s, field of view annular, 4.3 degrees, 10 times, uh, 2.2 degrees at 30 times. Linear feet at 1,000 yards, equivalent of 225 at 10 times magnification and 115 yards at 30 times magnification. Binocular multi-coated optics, rubber coated, water resistant, soft carrying case, binocular strap. So that's essentially what we have. The box looks a little bit battered, but hopefully that won't be an issue. So let's open these up. There is that sealed. So once again, if we just open that seal. And let's see what we have inside. So the box has a little bit of foam in there to protect everything. Put that aside now. There are instructions, which are for two different kinds of binoculars, it would seem. And these instructions are repeated over and over again in different languages, but they're also in English. And inside we have the binoculars inside of their soft carry case. The carry case looks like it's nylon. There's a cleaning cloth a strap for the binoculars, the actual strap for the carry case, and that's everything inside of it. There is a slight sort of very, very thin foam here. This is not really to protect it from serious bumps and knocks, but minor little bumps and knocks, it'll certainly manage. If we now come to the binoculars, So we have front lens caps and rear lens caps, as one would hope. They don't weigh a lot. These are less than two pounds. And what I will show you is they are very ergonomic. So taking a closer look at some of the features. You have a center focus wheel, and this will, when you rotate it, will bring the eyepieces closer or further away from the main body, adjusting the focal length and bringing things into focus. There is a lever here, and when that lever is actuated up or down, it changes the magnification. Fully up is minimum magnification 10 times. Fully down is maximum magnification 30 times, and obviously there's various positions in between which you can adjust to. Uh, the rubberized outside has these which can flip down. If you're trying to use binoculars while wearing glasses, you need to be able to get a little bit closer with the glasses to actually look through the eyepieces so these fold down. If you're not using them with glasses, you want these up, and as your face begins to touch that, it holds your eyes at the correct distance away to view through these lenses. The 50 millimeter lens is up front. Everything looks good and clean, and I've just actually taken a quick look across the house. Um, it does have a pretty crystal clear, sharp image. Uh, but of course, we'll try them outdoors in daylight, and that'll be better. I did actually have a peek outside. It is nighttime right now, uh, and even distant, dimly lit objects were 
Now they were a little bit on the dark side, as you would expect, it being dark out there. I couldn't look at the moon, it's too cloudy. But it's pretty good. So here we have it mentioning multi-coded optics. And of course, here we have up close G2 10 to 30 by 50 zoom. Um, overall, obviously, I need to test these to in proper field conditions, and you'll be with me when I do that. Uh, so far, they're looking pretty good. I will mention one other feature, which I won't be using in the short term, but will eventually use. This component here unscrews, and let me see if I can unscrew it. Yeah, there we go. And the reason why that unscrews, for those who don't know, is that's where you would attach it to a tripod adapter. Uh, obviously for binoculars you have a sort of an L-shaped adapter which we will be getting in at some point and this will allow these to be mounted to a tripod which is particularly for the higher magnifications extremely useful. So hopefully, screw that back on, and again of course you can adjust the angle to suit your eye spread. So these are the Celestron up close G2 10 to 30 by 50 magnification um, binoculars. We will be testing them in the next part of the video. Stay tuned. So here we are at Slimbridge and we're going to test out the binoculars and hopefully we'll give you a bit of a good view uh give you some idea of how well they perform stay tuned so this is slimbridge uh started by sir peter scott son of captain scott of the antarctic Antarctic. It was the Antarctic. I was right the first time. And uh, he started off here actually as a duck hunter and eventually started, basically started conservation worldwide. And, uh, it's really, really, really great. The Wetlands Trust actually covers a really large area here, and there are various bits near the estuary on the Severn where they have hides, which is we're going to test the binoculars. But even here, right by the entrance, you've got loads of ducks, geese, so forth, and many species from around the world in various parts of this place, including flamingos and all kinds of wild fowl that require wetlands. So. We would say it's a bird watcher's paradise, but also uh, a really terrific place to test out a pair of binoculars because the place is a little bit on the vast side. And of course, with a lot of the birds here, you don't really need binoculars because you can literally walk right up to them, but... These nenes were brought here by Peter Scott during his lifetime, and many were returned to the wild in Hawaii that had been bred here in Slimbridge, and it is almost certainly the reason why the nene is now no longer extinct in Hawaii, is because of the conservation efforts done here. Stop 
things for a little lunch and a quick picnic. And we'll have a really quick look at the binoculars as well. Now, take one of these caps off. We have the adjustment for magnification here. And there's also a little dial here which will show us whether we're going 10 or 30 or whatever it is in between in terms of the magnification. So these will see how they perform at different magnifications. Obviously, pretty long time viewing with uh, high magnification. We're going to want to use a tripod. I don't have one for this at the moment, but I'll say this is just an initial test. Um, compared to much smaller binoculars, and these are set of bushnels, and these are 8 by 21 binoculars. Obviously these have a much wider field of view, and they are, for daytime use, absolutely perfect. They weigh almost nothing, and they take up very little space. Whereas with these, we're starting at 10 times, and going up to 30 times. And one thing I'll point out is that it has a much narrower field of view, and the higher the field of view, uh, higher the magnification rather, the narrower the field of view. The other thing to remember as well is I can look at something 20 feet away with these or even 15 feet away and focus on them. With this that would be impossible. With these uh, on 10 times the magnification things are going to need to be a little bit further away for me to focus on them. Uh, and at full 30 times the magnification they need to be further away still. You're looking at sort of over just over 40 feet to perhaps just over 70 feet. Uh, so these have a limitation in as much as they're meant for looking at something further away. But then that's the trade-off. You get the higher magnification for when something's further away. But when something's closer, a much smaller pair of binoculars or lower magnification binoculars will be the way to go. However, before we quite get into that, time for a little lunch. So, quick overview of the experience I'm having with these. At 10 times magnification, you get a really crisp, crystal clear image. And in fact, up to about 20 times magnification on these, it is pretty darn good. Uh, by the time you go on to 25, 30 times magnification, uh, there's a significant drop in the light and it's harder to get focus, although if you focus it really well at 30 times and then drop down, uh, your image is much more crystal clear because you fine-tune the focus much better at the higher magnification. But I would say that anything from 10 to 20 magnification with these is, is a really good image. If things are very distant, you are glad for the 30 times, but of course, as you look further away, your field of view narrows, and, of course, your light level drops as well a little bit, which in full daylight isn't so bad, but for nighttime viewing would probably be an issue, or low light level viewing would be an issue. But certainly from 10 to 20, 15, anything in that region, uh, these work like any decent pair of binoculars I've ever owned. So they're really rather good. They don't weigh much, and they're giving a good image. 
I'm going to try to give you a bit of an image uh, through one of the lenses now so you can see a little bit of what I'm talking about, but we're getting some really good views of the bird life. Well, getting the camera lens to focus through the binocular was a bit difficult. Those three stills that I just showed you were taken at 10 times, about 15 times, and then at 30 times magnification to give you some idea of how the zoom effect works. Uh, <laughs> because my camera lens is not compatible with this and I need to get an adapter so I can actually attach these and show you the proper image, uh, you're going to have to take my word for it that the image at 10 to 20 times is crystal clear. And if it goes off a little bit by the time you get to 30, well, and it's a little bit darker and it takes a little bit more fine tuning, that's true too. But it does bring it in a lot closer as you were able to see from those three stills. Uh, just as a reminder, the central focus wheel is how we focus it and that is for the left eye. You leave your right eye closed when you focus, then close your right eye, open your left eye, and then using the diopter wheel, you bring that into sharp focus. At that point, when both eyes are in focus, you only need to use the center wheel. So if you're having different individuals using it, it may need to be readjusted depending on how different your eyes are. But once, if you're just using your pair of binoculars on its own, that's all you need to do to get good focus. And to be fair, right now, I have them set for, let's work this in then, there we are. So that is a crystal clear image. And it was a little, not as crystal clear as I'd like to be, it was pretty good. Uh, but that was at 30 times, so I've now dropped it down to about 25 times magnification. And to tell you the truth, that really is a very, very good view. So perhaps maximum magnification on this isn't ideal, but most single focus binoculars, even high power ones, will only be 15 or 20 power. So the fact that you can get actually a decent image at 25, something to be rather pleased about. When you consider how inexpensive these are, I can honestly say these are some of the best value for bin money binoculars I've ever had the pleasure of using. So how did you find them? I think they're a really excellent binoculars. They're really good value for the money and they make a real difference to enjoying seeing the birds. It's a completely different experience being able to see, especially some of the ones further away. Absolutely, by the, uh, you can actually see what kind of birds they are. Yeah. So the Celestron 10 to 30 by 50 binoculars. As zoom binoculars go, I really had my doubts about getting zoom binoculars because I thought them a bit of a toy, but actually they performed really well, particularly up to 25 times magnification. At last five times from 25 to 30, not quite as clear as I want, but then we only have 50 millimeter lenses. I think really you need to think in terms of 60, 70 millimeter lenses, maybe even 100 millimeter lenses if you want that 30 times magnification. But they are good. I certainly recommend them, and they are very affordable. Uh, I hope
hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found it interesting. If you like it, please click like. Consider subscribing and do share this video with those that you know who would be interested. And uh, have a good one. See you next time.